This video is brought to you by DollarGraveClub.com. You won't care where you're buried when you're dead, so why pay more than a buck for a hole in the ground? No, no, it's brought to you by Patreon.com slash DosaBuckley. The week of August 5th, 2023, the number one, two, and three songs on the Billboard Hot 100 were country songs. This is the first time this has ever happened in the 65-year history of the chart. In fact, in the top 40, there were 13 country songs on the chart. 32% of the mainstream top 40 chart, measuring sales and streaming, regularly dominated by pop and rap songs, country. And at number one was the controversial Jason Aldean song, Try That in a Small Town. We'll get to that in just a second. The next week, the chart got all fucked up by a Travis Scott album release. It trampled all over the Hot 100 like a crowd surge at Astro World. But even then, the number one and number two song continued to be country songs. And six songs remained in the top 40, even with Travis having 15 songs rushed to the front of the crowd, crushing the rest into a guardrail and leaving them in the dirt. I want to give you a little context. In 1992, when Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit had its best week on the charts at number 6, and you thought, oh man, that was back when people liked rock, aka good music. There are only four other songs one might consider rock in the top 40. Three of them, soft ballads. Metallica's The Unforgiven, Motley Crue's Home Sweet Home, and Guns N' Roses' Don't Cry. The fourth, was U2's Mysterious Ways. And right now, someone's screaming, that's not rock, into a body pillow they call Kiko. The rest? Pop, R&B, and hip hop. Just like today. At least according to the Billboard charts, country is more popular right now than alt rock was in 1992. But why is this? Well, your old pal Buckley has a theory. A country theory. First things first, let's talk about old Jason Aldean. Try That in a Small Town is a song in which a man who grew up in the fourth largest city in Georgia and makes tour stops in places like Phoenix, Denver, and Kansas City tells you that A. Violent crimes and disrespecting the police doesn't exist in small towns. And B. Even if it does, it's met with near-instant vigilante justice from the people who take care of their own and also includes a lyric stoking fear about the government taking your firearms. With the line, got a gun that my granddad gave me, they say one day they're gonna round up. Well, that shit might fly in the city. Good luck. Do you know how old this fear-mongering is? It's so old, the guy who said you'd have to pry his gun from his cold, dead hands has been cold and dead for 15 years. And he stole the line from an old document from 1976. If someone's coming to take your guns, they're taking the fucking scenic route. Anyway, the week it came out, liberals widely mocked it on the internet and also called it racist because they think everything's racist. I never saw the original music video, but I guess it had footage of a Black Lives Matter protest slash riot slash box social, whatever your preferred noun. So he removed that footage from the video and then people still called it racist. And that's the fucking call to arms, my friends. You call something racist? You might as well just give it a million dollars yourself. And so, the song, which had already been released and was doing barely anything on the country chart, and wasn't even on the Hot 100, the week of the controversy, shot to number two on the Hot 100, then reached number one the week after. The culture war will always bring out the support. No different than Morgan Wallen getting a boost when he said the N-word. Them dirty libs try to cancel him, but we ain't gonna let that happen. We need to save the freedom to yell racial slurs in our neighborhoods at 3 a.m. Now, I'm not pretending that controversy sells is my theory. We'll get to that. We all know that, and this shit works both ways, of course. Remember when the right got their chastity belts all jammed up over WAP? That song spent four weeks at the top of the charts, heavily aided by the controversy. Baby Benny telling everyone his wife was drier than the dunes of Arrakis helped give that song a huge boost. The only thing is, country hasn't really been able to capitalize on this, at least charts-wise, until recently. Perhaps you remember the Neil McCoy song, Take a Knee, My Ass, brackets, I Won't Take a Knee, in case you didn't get that the first time. 
in response to black pro athletes protesting the national anthem. Hilariously ironic for a guy named Neil to be singing about that. That song was number four on Amazon and iTunes digital country charts for a week, but did not chart on the Billboard Hot 100 at all. But why? That song came out in 2017. Spotify was a thing. Streaming and meme songs were absolutely accounting for Billboard success. Despacito dominated the Billboard Hot 100 for four months on the strength of its YouTube numbers. Migos' bad and bougie success was entirely based on memes. Ed Sheeran's Shape of You was the first song to ever hit 2 billion streams on Spotify, helping it secure 12 weeks at number one on the Hot 100. But Lamb's all city songs. So, what happened? Why were country songs not able to capitalize on this, and why can they now? Well, Libs, for that, you can choose your enemy. Blame either Joe Biden or Elon Musk. You see, in 2021, a bill was passed that would earmark $65 billion for broadband in rural areas. Now, let's not pretend the government can actually do shit in two years, so Biden probably hasn't helped anyone on this at all, unless he's running cable on the weekends. But in the last several years, even in spite of the delays, more and more Americans in rural areas have been getting access to broadband. Pew Research says 72% of rural Americans said that they have a broadband internet connection in 2021, up from 63% in 2016. The 2023 numbers aren't in yet, but I bet that's only increased. On top of that, over the last two years, Starlink, Elon Musk's satellite internet solution, has increased its number of American customers. Most of those are rural users. And 4G and 5G wireless connections have become far more accessible. Pew Research again tells us that 80% of rural Americans own a smartphone. So, instead of just listening to the radio, or buying a CD, or even buying songs on iTunes because connections were just too shitty for streaming, even rural Americans can use Spotify and YouTube, which boosts these songs on the charts. Buying a song once gives it a boost that week and that week only. Play that MP3 every day for six months, it doesn't do jack shit for the charts. But streaming a song every day for six months gives it a boost for six months. And so, that's my theory. Over the last five years, rural Americans have gotten access to the same services that all them their city slicker fist humpers have. And since they are the primary consumers of country music, their listening habits have started to be recorded and count the same way that urban and suburban consumers have. The playing field is starting to be leveled. Those 5G towers ain't giving everyone the vid. They're giving you access to things the rest of the country has been enjoying for like a fucking decade. You know what you can try in a small town now? Watching fucking Netflix. Because, adding to my theory, you ever watch American Idol these days? No, of course you don't. You have a good internet connection. You have choices. But from 2016 to 2022, five of the six Idol winners were country singers. You know why? Because the audience votes on that shit, and the only people left watching American Idol are people who have no other choice but to watch satellite TV or over-the-air network TV. Or, you know, turn the TV off and talk to their families, but <laughs> no thank you. But that is why 13 country songs can appear in the top 40 in a week. That is why Travis Scott can be denied a number one, much like one of his concert goers being denied air. A third one, Buckley, come on. It's not all hate listening. Luke Combs is number two with his cover of Fast Car, and no libs are mad at him as far as I know. No one's trying to cancel Zach Bryan or Bailey Zimmerman or Chris Stapleton or Kane Brown. Rural America, finally gets to matter. They get to have their voices heard. And for all you libs who are always yip-yapping about representation, that should matter to you, right? That we get a better representation of what America is actually listening to. Plus, now you'll know what songs they use to woo their cousins, just in case you ever want to fuck yours, too. Fuck, I was so close to not making a joke about that. <laughs> 